<laughs> it's going, guys. All right. So since you're all individual, but I already said your IQ is uh, what kind of variable? But I want to hear it's numerical so before we call it off quantitative. All right. What about your eye color? Why is that not quantitative? All right. In other classes, they could call it qualitative. That's that is true. Qualitative. In AP stats, we call it categorical. Yes, sir. Spell it. Q U L. I mean Q U A L I A. Qualia. Qualia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the terms of categorical, we just can't do math on them. Your eye color. I can't say your average eye color is gray because if we put all your eye colors together in a vat of and see what color comes out, you can't average eye colors. Okay. I can average IQs, I can average test scores, I can average our weights, I can average, today we're gonna do uh, pulse rates related to your blood pressure. Those are all quantitative variables. You are full of variables. It never ends. Number of parents at work, number of parents that went to college, number of siblings in the home, number of TVs in your home, number of religious books in your home, number of uh, subscriptions you pay for for TV, YouTube, uh, YouTube Red, Hulu, Netflix is the biggie. Um, are there others? Probably, okay. So there, there, are, there are a lot. So we're gonna first do a lesson to calculate your pulse rate. You're going to do it three times, and the directions are rather simple to make it easy for everybody. You are only going to time yourself, and somebody else can help you out, time 30 seconds. And it's important that you, when you take your own pulse, that you are doing it with fingers and not a thumb, because somehow the thumb interferes, has its own little pulse. So you do your fingers. I saw people yesterday, they were doing it to carotid artery, which is... What, what I have to do, because I can't, it takes me forever to find my pulse here. I think I'm dead when I do it here. So I can do it here, and, and it seems to be stronger. So 30 seconds, 30 second count, you'll double it, and you put it here. 30 second count. You're going to do it three times. When you get your three times, you will find the average by adding them up and dividing by three. Do you understand what you are going to do? Yeah. Yes. It should take us five minutes for you all to have your value. Please get it done. I don't know if anybody's actually going to watch this video. They're going to just hear silence for five minutes, so they're probably going to they're probably going to click something else more fun. if I had like some elevator music to play while this is happening, or at least the Jeopardy theme song. Oh, is that the hoop? I think it's so annoying that the hoop one.
see some people wrapping it up. So when you have your average, I want you to round it to the nearest pulse per minute and come up to the board and you use M or F that represents your biological gender and you're gonna put your, your, your numerical values, okay? Feel free. I'm gonna go by biological because I think it still will show a difference between men and, and women biological. Be before we leave, what is your name, sir? David. Justin's going to explain to us on the web page what, what we could be clicking that gave us the old form in case you want to get your data in the new form. Average of all three, and then round that average to the nearest beat per minute. That's what we're recording on the chart on the board. Are these the last people that have to post their score? That's it? Last one? Okay. Oh, got another one. Yeah, it was bigger, but people moved. All right, so I'm looking at the data, and it's in, in no, it's all random order. Um, any observations that I see? A 57.3, you didn't follow directions. That should just round to 57. 57. We'll do that. Because you've got to get this data on your paper. 73. That stays at 73. I am really concerned of a female with 107. 
I'm, I'm not a doctor. Unless you just got done running, uh, sitting heart rate should not be 107. So either you did the math wrong before you leave today, please double check, do a whole minute and check your pulse. And then if it's still that high, I'm going to ask you to go see the nurse at lunch. I'm, I'm really serious. Because we were sitting here for quite a while, okay? And so I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I think you did the math wrong. Now, should we be also overly concerned with somebody who is lower? 54.6 should be recorded as a what? 55. Come on, guys. 55. Is there anything lower than 55? Yes. Where, where's a 43? 50, uh, 43? 53. 54 is right above 55. 54. So if I had to guess, I would say the person with a 54 is pretty healthy, probably a runner or a weightlifter. Am I, who, that person volunteer who they are? Am I at all close? Yes. What do you do? Uh, do you, are you on a team for running? No, I, I'm in some training. Do you, have you run a 10K before? I run like two miles. <laughs> two miles? Regularly? Before I lift. Before, every day? Or every time? So he's a runner. If you, you can run two miles nonstop and get that done within, you know, 20 minutes or so, yeah. You're gonna have a better cardiovascular. His heart pumps one time, and it pumps enough blood that feeds the brain, so that's healthy and the rest of your body. A person who's got 107 tells me that that is beating so fast because your body needs the blood. But that's really fast, okay? Um, so I, I, I hope the math is wrong. If, if you fix your math and come up and fix that, please do so. If it's, if it's not wrong, please go to the nurse and have your blood pressure checked, okay? Um, so everybody needs to get all the data because we're gonna come back to that data and we're gonna do some analysis of the distributions. Oh, a vocabulary word, distribution. This is a distribution. It's all possible values that could come from this class. It's the data set that I'm worried about. I have another distribution over here and another distribution here. Since the sample size is, they're not too small, you're gonna find out that a sample size of 25 is usually appropriate to do statistical analysis, but it isn't, it is interesting sometimes to put all the data as one big sample and check does the description matches each individual. Now theoretically, when we draw a sample, that may be the only sample you will ever get to experiment on or the only sample you'll get to analyze. I'll give you an example. If your job was to test the safety of Ford Escapes, so you need a sample of brand new 2018 Ford Escapes to crash them and do a test. They do this. But it, if you grab 25 Ford Escapes and they're all costing, you know, 25 to $30,000, even Ford, who makes a lot of money, is not going to want you to crash a whole bunch of vehicles. So that set you have is very valuable. And the data you get is the only data you are going to ever have and when you get the results, the results is supposed to represent the population of all 2018 Ford Escapes. These results as a whole, as a distribution, is supposed to represent, we'll say all students at Med High. Because your sample is supposed to be representative. And our job later on is to find out, is it? Or what's the probability that it, the, the population is the same 
with these descriptions that we're going to talk about. What are the descriptions we talk about? Uh, I can take the average. The stats word for average is mean. The mean of this data would be if I add them all up and divide by 26. Let's see if you know what the word mode is. Mode, M-O-D-E. Say it again. Most frequent. Most frequent. Frequent one, the one that came up the most. And I don't know, I can't tell by looking at it. I'd have to list them all probably in numerical order and see if any repeated. How about the word range? What would range be of a distribution? And it, you can put your data biggest to smallest. That's right. But what, what, what do you do with that? The difference between the max. Well, we already have our max is 107. No one's arguing that. And our min is at 54. So our, it looks like, 53, 53 is our range, 107 minus 54. Now, that distribution could have the same range as this distribution. What if, what if this class was all more healthier than this? Oh, that does move, I see what you're saying. I'll figure it out how I can do it on the fly. In, oh, and it bounces back up in the end. Yeah, I think in order to stop it, I have to do it. From a, it's, not, it's a new iPad, so it doesn't have a button. I know, it's what we're, we're talking about. Yeah, I have to swipe up and hit it, right? So I don't know if I wanted to swipe up at this point. Uh, the range could always be the same, even if the class is healthier. So I gotta move that back to where we need it. All right, so look down on your paper. What's the first vocabulary word? Did we talk about it already? We did. Somebody said we did. I thought we did. Next vocabulary word? Variables. Look at that. A variable can take on many different values, and an individual can have many different variables. You've got your categorical. You've got your quantitative. You've got the word distribution. Another word that's not on there is median. What's median? So the middle. So the median of this data would be the middle of this glob would be 54. No. That's not the middle. Got a range. Uh, got a, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to put them. You have to put them in order like we did for the other things. And if there's 20, we said there's 26 people in here. So what's the middle of 26? 13 and 13 is 26. So what's the middle? Oh, how do you get 0.5 people? You gotta find the average of the first two. Okay, so the 13th person and the 14th person we'd average, that would be the median. Okay? So now let's move on. You are gonna use that data some other time. In your paperwork, oh, I keep wanting to touch the smart board there. You have another set of data. This is data that was collected regarding a two-week span of NFL football games. And in one week, there could be many games. On Sunday alone, there could be five or six different games in the country. Maybe only two or three are televised on TV. Wait, the NFL? NFL. Then there's Tuesday night football. Then there's Thursday night football. So in a week, there could be a lot of games that you don't even know is being played. You'd have to go NFL.com and see what games are actually on at different times. But they did the combined sum. This 32 is a combined sum of a game of both teams. So maybe one score scored 10, one team scored 10, and the other scored, other team scored 22. Could be, doesn't really matter. It's a combined score. And what we're going to do is we are going to place those values in what we call bins, because the next, the last vocabulary word up there is histogram. Histogram is a picture that helps us see the shape of the distribution. And when I say shape, the normal curve is this curve that has this one hump and has nice two pretty tails, and you've seen them before. And you, when people used to ask, 
the teacher, are you grading on a curve? You ever heard that? that? That's a bell curve. That meant most people have to pass the test. When you grade on a curve, you're going to find out more than 68% have to pass the test because that's going to be the middle area. So you try to, we don't do that anymore. We don't grade on the normal curve anymore. Um, so this shape may be something different. So what we're going to do here is these are called bins. Arbitrarily, somebody decided to say, I'm going to make a score from 15 to 24 fit in one bin. And any score from 25 to 34 in one bin. And, and why do they get these numbers? Well, I'm looking at the NFL data. The smallest data is 16, I think. Mm -hmm. They could have started at 16 and counted up. But they chose for whatever purposes to start at 15 because what you end up having to do is you look at your data and you have to ask yourself, well, what spread do I want per bin? Do I want it to be a length of five, length of four? How, ma how many bins do I want? Bin will tell you how many bars you're representing. So this person obviously wanted to have seven different uh, bars, vertical bars, in his histogram. You could have had eight. You could have had five. It's up to you if you're going to do your own from scratch. But he's already set it up for us. And you'll notice they are equal widths. 15 plus what is 24? Seven. No. Nine. Nine. 25 plus what is 34? Nine. What is going on over there? By the way, everybody in the world that's yeah, here. 35 plus 44. Nine. So they have to be the same. So basically, they probably took the min and the max, did the range, and divided by nine or even 10 if you think about what's going to happen here. And the max, they went to 84. But is 84 even the largest? Is it? Where is it? It's, it's not on there. What's the largest? 79. So the only reason why they went to 84 is because they had to add 9 every time. So you need that bin even though you weren't going to need it all. Okay? Once you make a decision how many bins I'm going to use and I divide by a certain number, then you got to keep that pattern up. So what we do here for this is we have to examine how many numbers are between 15 and 24. Which ones are they? Okay, I got to go slow. 23. So I'm going to circle this. Well, will it let me circle? Oh, I don't have it. Hold on. 23. What's the other one? Six. Up here, the top row. 16. 22 and a 24. Where's 24? Close to 23. I'm blind. Oh, top row middle. 24. This one? Can, I need a set it where you can see my a pointer. I don't have it turned on. I'm learning. All right, so there's four. That's how many are in that bin. Yes, sir. And that's a frequency, guys. That's a frequency. That happened four times, frequency. All right, now, to do 25 through 34, I'll, I'll put a slash through it so you can see the difference. Uh, is this it, 25 through 34? Yes, the first one, 32? Is that? So I'll put a slash. 25, I'll look for anything, 25 to 32. Where's the next one? 25. I'm looking. Is below this? My better look up here. Diagonal. Over here? That's two. Anything else? 
33 at the end, that's three. Anything else? Nope. Three. You sure? Everybody? Yes, sir. All right. Please, with you and your partner or by yourself, finish those counts. And to check your work, should add up to how many if you add all these bins up? 32 games. So the frequency should add up to 32. Take a few minutes and finish the bin count. Yeah. Um, not out at the moment. Let me look. Aaron, right here. No, that I don't. Quickly. Who's still working? A couple more, okay. We all set, almost? <laughs> okay, so can I have, let me have the other answers uh, 35 through 44, 13, 45 to 54, 55 to 64, only three, 65 to 74, and 75 to 84, one. So what we're going to do now, we are going to graph the y-axis as the frequency. So what we just counted is the y-axis. So we go to the next page. And this is going to be fun. Let me see, get my next page here. There it is. There's the next page. And I'm going to call this the y-axis, this vertical here. So every good graph labels axes. So I'll even though I might, whoop, I need to erase that. I might need more room than that, so I'll try to extend this up as far as it'll let me go. And I'm gonna call this frequency, F-R-E-Q. And so, my bins, we started at 15. So right here where you would put zero, I'm actually gonna put a 15. And, and how long was that bid? 15 to what? 24. 
to 24. But where does the next one start? 25. So I'm actually going to go to 25. Because that's actually the end point that I don't count of the left bin. You'll see what I'm going to do in a second. The next bin ends, ends where? Or should I say starts where? Where does it start? 35. What's after 35? And you should make every bin the same width. It isn't even a bad idea to do tick marks. 1, 2, you know, 20, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then, but I'm just going to make one tick mark. 45 to 55, then to 65 starts the other bin. 75 starts the other bin. Is there a bin that's starting at 85? I'm still going to put the number because it becomes the right end of a bin. My frequency, how many did I have in that first bin? Three. So my frequency, the lowest was one and the highest is 13, is that correct? So I might want to at least scale my y-axis. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, I'll label 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, label 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That way, it makes it easy for me to find my first bin you said was how high? 4. Four. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the 26, the, the 25, because I'm not including 25 in it, but it starts the next bin. So it becomes a wall. So I just go up to the 25, and I'm going to go up to 4 vertically and go over 4. And some people actually put the number, a little number 4 right there, just so they know that they counted 4. That's okay. I've seen a lot of histograms that do that, that tells you that bin, there was 4 of them. How many were in the next bin? So starting at 25, I'll even change the color to show you. Starting at 25, it actually is the 3. I went too far, didn't I? No, it looks okay, 3. And so at the right side, at 35, I go up to 3. And it actually makes 3 here. See that? How many were in the next bin? Okay, so that's going to be a little more work. So I got to go all the way up to 15, 14, 13. So it's, it's over there. So let me, if you were uh, wanting to do a great, beautiful job, a grid paper would be good, a ruler, definitely. But we're just doing a fast example. I say fast, but it's really not that fast. It's still a lot of work. 13. How many was in the next bin? Six, so that's a little higher than the five, so I'm going to go six over to the end of the bin, which actually starts the next bin. That's six. Next bin, please. Three. Three. I, I've had a three before, so I'll try to make it parallel to this three here. Let me change my color again. Three. Next bin. Two. two? So that's even lower than it was. So two, go one, two. And then, one. then a one. So one is hardly anything. One. So there is your first histogram by hand. Was a lot of work. There's only one thing missing. Title. Thank you. So this was combined, let's see, let me write it here, combined NFL scores per game in two weeks. I didn't label the axis, so what is this going to be? I got to label that axis, what was that? 
Uh, scores. It was combined game total. Okay, good. I know I get lazy. And I sometimes don't label my axes. I don't put my titles because I'm just, it's only for me. But if you're going to communicate statistics to other people, like a teacher who's going to grade your work, you'll want to get everything so you don't lose any points. Are there any questions on what I had just done? Now, here's the good news. What, I got just enough time to probably help you out with the calculator. So you're going to pick up your calculator because the next step, this took a lot of time. It even says right here, this is time consuming. Sure was. Let's create a histogram using the calculator. So in your calculator, you must find the key marked stats. Now the problem is, I don't have access to my computer while I'm running this explain. I can try to bring it up. Since uh, you go to stat plot. Let's see if you can follow the directions on this. And if you don't have a calculator, please get close to somebody because when I see you next time, your calculator has to have a histogram. Okay? Stat, plot, raise your hand if you don't see it. I'm going to be trying to get the calculator back up. Oh, which calculator? I, I can't help you. Remember what I said? I have done it before, but it's been. No calculator? Yeah. Look on with somebody. Yes, I got my calculator up. Yes, sir. Stat. So here I go. I, stats next to the left arrow key here. Stat. When you hit the edit, you have a list. If you already have something in the list, you can move up to list one, L1, and hit clear, not delete, clear, and those will be raised. But I'm going to leave them since they are your data. So you will key in all 32 pieces of data. It should take you a couple minutes. If you are working with somebody else because you did not follow directions, did not bring your technology, maybe the partner ought to make you put some of them in as well. You do some of the work. on the paper, if it adds the 32 and you type them in, it still should be 32. Oh, if you're looking at the count afterwards, it'll say 30, it'll give you 32 that are in, but if I, if I scroll down with my calculator, the next one will say 33. On the, watch. Wait, how, how many numbers do we have? Wait a minute, why do I have so many? Oh wait, that's, that's, that's my 22. Now I'm at my 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I ah, see, it says 33, but there's nothing there. So, you really only have the 32. All right? Everybody ready to move on? I mean, you can go ahead if you want. Next thing the directions say, is I don't need to look at this anymore. I hit second 
y equals, it's in blue, up there above y equals, that's your stat plot. So when you hit that, I want it second y equals, I will turn on a plot. I will turn it on. So when you hit it, I hit the enter on it, and I actually hit enter for on, and I actually have to say which plot do I want, and the histogram is the third plot over. So I just move down one and go one, two, three here. I'm on the third plot. Pay attention to the X list because you're going to get so many lists in your calculator. Which one do I want to use? I want to use list one. How do I change my list? If you look above the number one, it says L1 in blue. Second one means L1. You could change it. Second two will post an, uh, an L2. All right, so once you do this, how do I see my histogram? I'm not doing any of the work. I'm letting the calculator calculate. All I hit is zoom number nine. That's called zoom step. Zoom is the middle button, I think. Zoom. Yes. What's that? You don't have what? Color? We don't need color. Zoom number nine is zoom step and it makes a histogram that looks very similar to what's on our paper. Here. Wait, uh, how do you do zoom step? I put the, wait, the zoom variable and then you put the middle button. I think. Yeah, but your first bid can't be bigger than the rest. Exactly. I don't, it should. On your own. So let me show you something. We did it by hand. The calculator came up with its own formula. If I hit the word trace, if I hit the word trace, where's trace at? The fourth one. The fourth button. If I hit trace, notice what comes up. In the top of this bin, he's telling me the frequency is five. Our first bin didn't have five. The reason is, look what he used for his bin width. He went from the minimum was 16. It chose to do 16, and it went all the way up to the wall would have been 26.5. So what did he add to get to 26.5? He did, but also how much more? 1.5. No, it's 26. It's 10.5. Why does it say? He added 10.5 to get to the next and the next start of the next bin. You see what I'm saying? Why do that? Uh, the calculator has its own mechanism. Now, if, if this looks good, if this was a homework problem, I probably would copy this down and I would just trace to the next one. So if I'm labeling my numbers, I know that number was a, a 20. A 26.5 and I know it's going up that one's a 37 because 26.5 plus 10.5 is 20 is 37 so he added one variable? he added 10.5 oh no 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 but the frequency is 30. uh probably because he shifted enough that the wall changed it's holding a different number of values now what if I want to put it the way I had it I can go to the word window. That's in the paper here. I can go to window. I think that's the second button. Yes, sir. And I can say, wait a minute. I want the min to be 15 because I just did it by hand at 15. I can change that back to 15. And I want the max to be, how far did I go with an empty bin? 85? I want the max to be 85, even though I'm not using it. And I want to scale, how long was everyone going to be then? 15 to 25 was how many? 10. I want it to be a 10, not a 10.5. And the Y min, uh, that doesn't really change anything. I don't think I have to change that at all. Uh, y max, I know my max was only 16. I'm going to stop it at 16. 16. 
it was uh, 13. Oh, 13. I'll stop it at 13. Uh, I think I will take a look at it right now. So all I have to do now is hit graph. Hit graph the new numbers. And I say, well, gee, that looks just like it did a second ago. But wait. Wait. If I hit trace, whoop, wrong one. If I hit trace, why am I not hitting the right one? Can't see it, that's why. Trace, oh, look at that. 15 to 25, there was only four. Right over one. 25, in the, in the right end point was 35. There was three, so we were right. There's my 13. So, what do you think? Cool. Which is better by hand or the calculator? Calculator. Yeah. Now, I'm not giving you homework. Actually, guys, we're ahead of the other class. You are six, seven, eight minutes ahead. I'll probably have you work on one problem in the class while we wait for the bell. Deal? All right. Yes, let me pass out that paper. All right, everybody, say bye. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do what? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, because uh, Mr. Carr needs to retire earlier.